Welcome back to the Planet's video series on our Missinabe Kayak River Expedition. This is day three paddling the river. We're going to be going just about 27 kilometers from Peterbell Marsh to Green Hill River. So stay tuned and enjoy. On this day, we woke to the call of an osprey calling through the fog. Low clouds moved across the marsh as we packed up and embarked on our paddle. We were rejuvenated from yesterday's downtime and were ready to experience more history and rapids on the river. We ran Deadwood and Swamp Rapids. These were class one and class two, but still provided us with the morning vigor on the river. We came upon this beaver lodge. These are a dime a dozen on the Chaplow River, but this was the only one we saw on the Missinabe in our 140 mile trip. Well, we decided to portage Allen Rapids because of extremely high water. As kayakers, we believe we can run much more than canoes, but today we chose to portage Wavery Rapids too. The terrain was rugged, and you really need to watch your step to avoid rolling an ankle. Because of the recent rains, even the portages were flooded. Of course, that meant the mosquitoes were in full effect as well. We took a little time out to rest and dry off after dragging our 120 to 150 pound boats through both portages. We took note of yellow loosestrife, or what some people call swamp candles, paddled by some juvenile golden eyes. We had an otter bobbing and snorting at us. We saw quite a few green darners, as well as some American mountain ash shrubs. The Algonquins used to use the berries from these shrubs as a mild laxative. Thought that was interesting. So one of the things that was on our minds today was Green Hill Rapids. Uh, pretty tough, near a mile long, class three run. Um, they had had uh, eight days of rain prior to us arriving there, so the river was already high, plus a 100-year high from the winter melt. Um, our outfitter instructed us not to take it. We didn't plan on taking it. So uh, you can see here that we portaged all of our gear. It's a pretty decent portage. If you've been there, um, it's a lot of slogging through mud. It's pretty greasy, up and down hills. Uh, and there's no real way to scout the river uh, to see what you could or could not be taking. So it was pouring rain and uh, we hiked all of our gear down, camera gear included, so we don't have any footage of this. We walked all the way back to our kayaks and uh, decided that, well, let's just run the rapids. So our boats were empty, they were light as a bobber. We got in, ran the rapids. Uh, we don't have any footage to show you. Um, I got some bumps and bruises to show you and some good stories to tell you, but uh, we camped at the base of uh, Green Hill Rapids. There were some rollers and some stacks and all kinds of goodness in there, but uh, make sure that you are very safe when you do this. Carrying too much gear, that's exactly why we started the GW Facebook page. If you're not following us, check us out now. Search GW and like our page. You can see all other adventures and any new gear we come across there. Speaking of gear whore, let's check in with Aaron and his spot device. My job for the trip is the spot navigator GPS system. So I'm in charge of all the sending the alerts and messages for home, let everybody know we're okay. Our on button, on off, and so I just hit that and it starts to blink. And then uh, we've got a GW page set up on Facebook so that we can communicate through this as well as to the 911 service and also just call for help. So while we're out here, there's no cell phone service of any kind, so we rely on the GPS to keep us safe. So if I want to send a message, uh, an OK message, all I do is hit the OK button once and it sends a message to our GW page. And um, 
I also can set this up for tracking, so I've been tracking our entire trip uh, via the spot webpage, uh, findmyspot.com. And what you do for that is hold it down for five seconds, and then that'll start to track our, our uh, position as we travel down the river. So um, the 911 button sends out for search and rescue in case someone's hurt uh, in emergencies. And we can get uh, pulled to safety if something happens. So the help button is just saying that uh, we're okay, but we need some help. And um, the OK button lets everybody know we're okay and having a great time. Mid-afternoon, we had our second bear swim across the river in front of us. This is always exciting to see these big black bears. It was downwind from us, didn't know we were there, and just kind of got out of the water and took off on its way. <laughs> Here we were bubbling through some Class 1 rapids, and Russ and I were having a little fun uh, <laughs> hanging out next to each other. I mentioned earlier about the eight days of rain prior to us engaging on this trip. You can see here that just the damage and the logs and trees that the winter melt brings on, log jams, and if you see how fast we're actually going across these logs, like when you come up on one, um, here's one here. It, that actually just kind of knocked my GoPro off its tripod, so no harm, no foul, but uh, it's moving through there, even in the flat water. So we developed a saying that the river gives and the river takes. Some days you get glory from it, like seeing the bear. Some days you may lose your hat or your favorite pocket knife or something gets wet. But the river gives and the river takes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this addition to our series. Please tune in for the next one as we have a few more days on the river.